I want to thank uh, you all on behalf of David Azachi Brain Tumor Center for coming here today. Uh, especially uh, Nancy for uh, running the Brainstorm uh, series and Judy, my friend, uh, for supporting all year throughout all different things that she's doing for our center. I think today's talk was to just give updates about low-grade brain tumors. I mean, we always talk about brain tumors and we worry about prognosis and people fear about different things about having higher grade brain tumors. But what about low-grade brain tumors? We always say benign tumors and some of, some of you already know about low-grade tumors, how those low-grade tumors had changed their life, how much impact that low-grade tumor, so-called benign tumor, made on their life as well and still how much well they are doing and, and, and surviving and enjoying their life with even though having low grade tumors. So we decided to give a brief talk about low grade uh, tumor. There are so many things to talk about in a low grade tumor. It's almost impossible to talk in 15 minutes, but I'm going to try to give you an overview. 35,000 brain tumor patient um, diagnosis occurs in the United States every year. About one third of those are low grade brain tumors. And in most of, one third of them are low grade meningiomas. There are some low grade other types of brain tumors. There are what we call gliomas. So, a variety of different brain tumors has different treatment options and different prognosis and different impact on people's quality of life. So, when we divide the tumor, we divide broadly into the either low grade or higher grade and low grade tumors we divide them into tumors that either outside the brain which we call generally meningiomas we consider outside the brain which is starting from the coverings of the brain and grow either outside or inside depending on the size they cause the symptoms and other low grade tumors what we call low grade gliomas so every types of low grade tumors have different treatment options. So, when we talk about incidence, we, we said about 23, 24, 25 percent of the people have among all the brain tumors are meningiomas. Other one third of those low grades are either low grade gliomas, oligodendrogliomas, astrocytomas or some other different varieties of gliomas. Now, how do you present when people have a tumors? About very large population of um, people with low grade tumors have incidental findings. People get MRIs for different reasons and they have findings on MRI and they said, oh, by the way, you have this findings on MRI, you need to go see doctors specialized in taking care of meningiomas or whatever brain tumors that they have. Now, other half or slightly more than half of people have a symptoms. People with meningiomas, we're going to just divide them into the low grade tumors, broadly into the meningiomas for all practical purposes and low grade gliomas. I'm going to talk first about low grade, uh, first about meningiomas and then I'll switch gear to the low grade gliomas. So first we're going to talk about meningiomas. So in meningiomas also, there are def WHO uh, has three different characteristics, three different categories. Category 1, which is called benign meningiomas, which you have um, removed by surgery and you considered cured, there is very less chances of those tumors growing back. Second uh, grade, which is called atypical meningiomas, which is still somewhat lower grade, but has a slightly more higher chance of recurring faster than uh, grade 1 or benign meningiomas. And malignant meningiomas which has a higher, much higher tendency to grow lot faster, reoccur lot faster after initial surgery. So, meningiomas has also different grading as uh, many of us, uh, many of you know as well. So, once you die, you get those many uh, initial diagnosis of whether what type of uh, meningiomas you have, we decide into the different types of treatment. Now, what are the symptoms of people presenting with even low grade atypical or malignant meningiomas? Three most common symptoms people have. People have headaches, 
some of them have mental status change, confusion, and some of them have seizures. So these are the three most common complaints people have. There are lot many different complaints and symptoms people have depending on the location of the tumor and the size of the tumor. So, but these are the common things and not everybody start to worry about having meningiomas when they have headaches because headaches is one of the common symptoms people have when they have a large meningiomas. But not everybody who has a headache has a meningiomas. So, a lot of people who have meningiomas have a headache, but not other way around. So, not everybody needs to get panic about having meningiomas or brain tumor when they have a headache. And there's a very interesting story I can share you for just 30 seconds. When I was, I was doing my residency, we had a professor from Harvard giving a talk, and CAT scan just came out that time, and um, people were getting CAT scans for headaches. And, um, after the CAT scan, people were headache were getting better. Almost to half of the people were having no headaches. So everybody thought that CAT scan was curing the headache. And then one day he went, my professor went to that had actually CAT scan machine and he witnessed to see what's happening. Why more than half of the people not having headaches after getting a CAT scan? So he was sitting there, there's a technician doing a CAT scan and Patient comes out from a CAT scan machine and technician comes out, you did very good and I'm not a doctor but by the way you don't have, you don't have a brain tumor. Patient's headache is gone half of the time. <laughs> and that's what the guy realized that this is the reason half of the patient were having no headaches. A lot of people when they have a headache they always worry about bad things. I'm having a brain tumor. So that's the story that I always remember about CAT scan. Now, um, as I said, depending on the size and the location, people can have different other symptoms. And weaknesses on a one side or other side, nausea, vomiting, depending on the, the in, increased intracranial pressure, double vision, depending on the location, difficulties with balance, mental status change, confusion, seizures. So these are the common symptoms people have when they have, and signs when they have meningiomas. Now, how do we diagnose? And I'm, run, I'm going very, very fast because I'm going to cover a lot of things in 15 minutes. How do we diagnose people with meningiomas? So the common test most of the time, as I just mentioned, is a CAT scan. Everybody gets a CAT scan before they even come see to the do, uh, specialist, neurologist. Most of the time, their primary care doctor do the CAT scan and they see something and they said, you need to go see neurologist or do MRI and then send, this, send them to us. So people get a CAT scan, so common test people get is a CAT scan. Generally speaking, if I see them first, I would go ahead and do the MRI because MRI is a gold standard to do di for the diagnosis of any brain tumors. So the standard, gold standard of diagnosing any brain tumor is MRI with and without contrast. So we do the MRI, we see the people with whatever location tumor and when we decide what should we do next. So after the diagnosis, we decide what should we do? What is the treatment? And um, treatment also depends on where is the tumor, how big is the tumor, and what are the symptoms people have with related to the tumors. So we, we design the treatment, not in, in brain tumor world, not one size fits all. Everybody's treatment, I always tell this to my patients every single time when I see them, that we cannot compare two different people regarding their treatment. Everybody's tumor is different. You have different genes and you have different body. You're gonna do, you're gonna respond differently to your tumor. No matter what we do to different uh, people, even same types of tumor. So depending on different size, location, and symptoms, we decide what we need to do and what is the best next step for those people. So, Generally, the standard of care for people with meningiomas, as we all know, is surgery. Surgery also has to be done by very skilled and trained neurosurgeon who does this tumor surgeries very frequently. We, have, we need to have a surgeon who are specialized or trained to do brain tumor removal because in low-grade tumor, which I am going to tell you in a few minutes, why it's very, very important. So in meningiomas, most of the time, it is depending on the location, are easily removable tumors. So 
most of the surgeons can easily remove depending on the location of course and and after the removal of the tumor we look under the microscope which is another most important um, step in a in a treating brain tumors because no matter what type of tumor we people has we final treatment depends on what we see under the microscope even though it looked low grade on a radiological imaging if the mri looked low grade we look at under the microscope we find something different we have to design the treatment accordingly so after the initial surgery we have almost gold standard to look all those pathology by our neuropathologist and many of the hospital as they don't have neuropathologist staff we also get as almost second opinion from neuropathologist to get the second diagnosis or second opinion for the diagnosis to make sure whatever we're calling is the right diagnosis which is either grade 1 2 or 3 meningiomas because as i said earlier different grading has different treatment protocols so depending on the either a typical which is a low grade atypical or malignant meningiomas we decide their treatment now after we review the pathology we decide person has low grade meningiomas which already were removed by surgeon those are the people where we don't need to do anything at the same time we have to make sure that we follow this is a common mistake people make when they have a tumor the get the surgery done everything is done and people said we cured we don't need to do anything and they just forget and after five years later they come back or ten years sometimes and they see the tumor recurrence and then they have a problems where the tumor is in a size or location again where it cannot be removed so once you have a tumor we always even sometimes you don't need every so often follow up we still have follow ups every six months every year some people I see even longer as long as you have a standard follow ups with with your specialist that's what it matters so once we diagnose them we decide the treatment as I said for a low grade gliom low grade um, meningiomas um, we remove the tumor and we follow we don't do further treatment for those group of people we manage the symptomatically most of the time when people have a, either a big or relatively good sized tumor removed they are most of the symptom that they had because of those tumor is also improves so if somebody is having headaches or confusions or weakness or or even seizures people will have less need to have further treatment or medications so we monitor, we decide the treatment. If they are having seizures, we treat them with the seizure medication and follow carefully. Now, if they have atypical meningiomas, then we decide depending on the atypicality, how much is atypical, how fast the tumor was growing, and we decide what should we do the next. If even sometime completely benign tumor, which is a grade one, if the surgeon can remove only some of it and other part of the tumor is located in a certain part of the brain where by remo removing the whole tumor we may hurt people we may cause more problems to the people even though it's a benign tumor and that's the last thing we want to do to cause trouble if this tumor is benign looking on MRI so in those cases we offer sometimes treatment and I'm going to talk about that in a minute so the third one which is called malignant meningiomas where surgeon goes in remove the tumor and under the microscope we see there is a higher grades there is some more uh, index of uh, proliferation what we call and we have a higher chances of people getting their recurrence faster for those people and also started to invade to some vital structures in the brain so those people we tend to aggressively manage with all different modalities now how would you treat after we have the correct diagnosis under the microscope so once we have those low grade tumors as i mentioned we don't give any treatment we monitor them follow them if the tumor is located at certain places where surgeon cannot remove 100 percent of those tumor we take out most of surgeon take out most of them and we decide further interventions if we have to do further treatment in that further treatment is most likely radiation so we give them radiation and monitor again carefully the atypical meningiomas we do the radiation as well depending on the 
size of residual tumor left or depending on where the si uh, tumor was removed from. And the third one which is a malignant tumor, we treat with both sometimes with radiation followed by chemotherapy. For, for meningioma, there are not many known chemotherapy that we know, so we try to work, uh, use different chemotherapies to see which works for those group of people. Fortunately, most of the people with meningiomas do well and enjoy their life with good quality of life. When I treat my patients, I always tell them that for me, not just to want to extend your life, I want to extend your quality of life. I want to make sure you have a good quality, that you enjoy everything that you are doing before or as much as you can do as uh, people without or with before when you were diagnosed with the brain tumor. So that's very, very important, quality of life. So we try to keep up with quality of life when we manage the people with meningiomas. And most people generally do well and enjoy their life with normal quality of life. Depending on the size and location, of course, some people may have some problems. Very, very rarely people can have some post-operative complications and we manage accordingly and, um, and try to uh, recover as much with physical therapy and different modalities of treatment. So that's what about meningiomas. I think uh, as we, some of you here and, and Nancy is one of the best example that you can do a lot of things and a lot of not only do it for yourself but for everybody else uh, when you have a tumor like meningiomas because when people hear the word brain tumor, they always panic and worries about not doing well or having other problems or not even surviving. So we can do the normal life and again um, quality is the most important thing.